Welcome to Pyramid Air's final installment of the TNT series. Air Gun Depot's got one more video to go with Travis Patton and I talking about all things air gun. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about the price of compressors. How much lower will they go? And we're also going to talk about kind of a hot button topic right now in the industry. Are Springer's dead? Check it out. Tyler, why don't you take this? And you've had a lot of, uh, you know, work behind the scenes with compressors sure. and so forth. Sure. Um, interesting question. Uh, for one, purely because right now you have like tariffs in China, you know, between the U.S. and China, kind of driving prices up actually. But really, we need to distinguish between personal compressors like the Nomad and the Traveler, and bigger compressors that are capable of filling tanks more readily, like your Air Venturi 4500 compressor, as well as your uh, like Benjamin Recharge. Um, I think, you know, you guys are selling like the Omega Trail Charger, which kind of blends that in there a little bit. Um, you know, I think you're going to see you have the stuff from China, the unbranded stuff that's available for a couple hundred bucks, but you're taking a little bit of a risk there. Uh, we've tried a bunch of them in-house and I can't recommend any of them on a personal basis just because we haven't had good luck with that stuff. You have to be a bit of a handyman to, you do. to pick up one of those, right? Yeah, and, and getting parts for them can be quite tricky as well uh, because a lot of these manufacturers in China are kind of faceless and nameless. So it, it can be difficult for sure without that U.S. support. Um, but to address the question, I think you're going to see at some point a personal compressor like a Nomad style compressor for filling your gun. Um, probably in the $400 range, I think that's going to be what ends up being the sweet spot. But taking out the tariffs. Right. And that's the whole thing. So, you know, I, I know you had like the Nomad 1 and then the Nomad 2. And I think that um, may have confused people a little bit uh, because there were, you know, things just happen so quickly in, in the industry. Um, but yeah, I think four, maybe 500 at the most for that kind of compressor. And I think we're going to end up around a thousand bucks for a personal like tank filling compressor. I think that's going to be kind of the sweet spot for that. Hmm. No, not yet. Really? <laughs> All right. So like, I guess uh, to me, that question is like, what's the next technological leap, right? Uh, if, because for springing gas piston guns, uh, Where's the innovation anymore, right? It's it, a couple of years ago. It was the gas ram, right? And, and then now everybody's got one. So where do we go from here? I'm, what are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I mean, when I think of technological innovations that could take place, I think of things that have already happened that just haven't made it mainstream. Main, mainstream. Yeah, mainstream. There you go. That was good. Uh, where Funny. you have, uh, you know, like opposing pistons and so forth. You know, to like reduce a recoil. And, and things like that. I mean, these have already come out, and the problem is there's just not the market for them now. I mean, they cost yeah. so much, and it's hard to sell somebody a $1,000 Springer. Well, and, and to be fair, what, what Travis is talking about is a, is a Wiscom air rifle, which had two opposing pistons um, that created a, re, a truly recoilless gun without a sled system. Um, and they were handmade works of art. Uh, I've shot a few, and they're incredible guns but they can also be very temperamental. It's not like it's, yeah. it's not a PCP, right? At the end of the day, it's not a PCP. A thousand dollar, you know, gas piston or, or spring piston rifle just isn't gonna fly, right? Um, I, for me, I think that the only place that spring guns have left to go is getting a magnum powered spring gun to cock like a youth rifle. And I don't know, I don't know if that's possible for one. I'm sure, you know, mechanically, there has to be some way to do it. Um, but that's the big one for me is that if you can make a, a, a hunting powered, you know, for maybe medium size, you know, raccoon size game accessible to somebody that isn't able to handle a 45, 50 pound cocking effort, that's definitely a game changer. So if we can see something like that, I think there's a place for it if it's priced right. But a lot of that wouldn't, especially when it comes to a spring gun or a gas piston, it's price dictates everything, especially now that multi shots are readily available. Yeah. yeah I mean, the SIG ASP20 is probably the closest to that. Right. Uh, but it's still, I thought, oh, this is, this is so easy to cock. I mean, right. relatively speaking, and, and for a kind of a yeah, bigger so, guy. Yeah, so, you know, and look, there have been guns before I actually had the opportunity a couple of years ago to shoot a electronic cocking spring gun, which was really oh. cool. It had like a NICAD battery in it. You hit a button once it's charged up, and it just goes, click. Hmm. That's really neat. Um, 
but I, that's not a like a solution, right? Because that's not something you can just pick up at the back door and go. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that's kind of the, now that multi-shots are there, I think that's really the next step because I don't think you're gonna get more big bore brake barrels or uh, you know spring gas piston guns. And I don't think the recoilless concept, whether it's a sled system or an opposing piston system, can be done inexpensively. And, and well, and also well, that being yeah. the qualifier. So yeah, I think the cocking effort's definitely a big one. Yeah, and the real problem with innovation in, in that area is that PCPs have dropped, or have gotten, you know, if I'm gonna pay three or $400, it's hard to tell somebody, you know, pick up a really nice Springer when they can pick up a PCP and not have any effort involved. Yeah, it. absolutely, and it's really, it's really hurt the, the brake barrel market, especially like if you walk into a local big box store those guns are just sitting on the shelf now. They're not flying off like they were. Uh, you know, even a, a 1400 FPS number doesn't catch your attention anymore because there's more people that know about air guns and kind of know what's what now. Um, so I think PCPs have, have really hurt that market quite a bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks for joining us today for our final installment, Pyramid Air's final installment into the TNT video series. Make sure you head over to Airgun Depot's page next Saturday. They're going to be releasing the 10th and final installment of the video series. We hope you guys have enjoyed this series. If you've missed any of the episodes, you can catch them all on our channel and Airgun Depot's channel. Uh, don't forget to comment down below. Let us know what you thought of today's video and the series as a whole. Who knows? Maybe we'll do some more in the future. Throw us a like if you don't mind. And as I said before, make sure you're subscribed to both channels so you don't miss any of the content. We appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you at the next one.